I'm like, I can't believe this actually happens this way. Someone read page 266, just that problem where it says a water spout. Sarah? Water spout is located at the top of a straight slanted surface in a perennial garden. It releases water that arcs through the air, landing onto the slanted surface to water the garden's flowers. The arc forms a parabola that is defined by the <coughs> equation y equals negative x squared plus 5x plus 18. And the linear equation y equals negative 2x plus 18 defines the slanted surface. Find the x coordinate of the point on the slanted surface where the water spout lands and also the point where the arc originates. Okay, so that's a lot of info for a word problem, uh, but it's actually something that's really cool. So just go ahead and draw this sketch real quick with me. It doesn't have to be perfect. But we're talking about a slanted surface and a water spout and how the water gets shot out of that water spout and travels. How is the slanted surface described? It's described as a line. It's just a line. So that's an awful line. <laughs> Let's try that again. It's a line. And then the water spout, when it shoots out the water, shoots out the water, it travels along that line. It, it travels and it will intersect with that line. But what kind of shape does the water travel in? A parabola. And we've seen that from the water fountain before. So what I want you to do here is just label this water. So this is a path of the water. And then this is the slanted surface, which is basically like, you know, like a, uh, the path is just slanted. So they're asking us, where does that water land on the slanted surface? They're asking me for this point right here. They want to know what this point is right there. And then they also want me to tell them, where does the water originate? Where does the water on the slanted surface originate? So they want these two points. They give me two equations, and um, Jensen, can you give me those two equations? Uh, y equals negative x squared plus 5x plus 18. Plus 5x plus 18. Mm -hmm. And then y equals negative 2x plus 18. All right, let's see if you guys understand what those equations mean. One is the parabola. One is the slanted surface, or the line. Caroline, which one of those equations describes the slanted surface? Only one of them does. Which equation? Uh, the y equals negative 2x. Why is it that one? Because it's not the other one? Yeah. Okay, do you guys notice anything? One's not saying because the top one's the quadratic. That's what makes it a problem. Okay, what's the highest exponent of uh, any variable here? One. That's a line. So whenever you have an x and a y, highest exponent is one, it's a line. But therefore, the one with the exponent of two has to be a quadratic, which is shaped like a parabola. So I got a parabola, and I got a, a line right here, and they're described right there. Okay, so we're going to try to find out where those two points are, the point where it originates, point where they intersect. Hmm. Transitive property. Uh, and I like doing this. I'm going to do this again. If y equals all this and y equals all that, what do I know about all this and all that? They're equal to each other. If y equals all this and y also equals all that, then I know that all this is equal to all that. So I know that those parts are equal to one another. That's transitive. <laughs> now I'm waiting for something. Oh, awesome. Oh, man. I know. OK, so uh, on this one, we're going to solve, but we've looked at three methods uh, this chapter. We've used factoring, we've used completing the square, and what do you use over the weekend? Using the quadratic formula. 
So all three of them will work. And you don't have to use all three of them in every problem, but we will today because I want you to know which ones you can pick. And then on your homework, you pick whichever one you want, which one you're most, most comfortable with. So what do you think I have to do here? Write it in standard form. Do you remember what that means? All the terms are on one side and what's on the other? Zero. So does anyone know how to get zero on one side? I'm going to add 2x to both sides to get rid of that negative 2x. What else should I do? Subtract 18 from both sides to get rid of that 18 on the right. So I'm left with negative x squared plus 7x equals 0. But do I want to deal with it as negative x squared plus 7x? What do you think? Yeah, I want to make the lead coefficient positive. So I'm just going to divide everything by negative 1. That's x squared minus 7x. What's the opposite of 0? zero. Oh, nice. So that doesn't change. Great. What are the three options for solving this? Factoring, completing the square, using the quadratic formula. Oh, my. Oh, my. Yes, ma'am. Why can't the first term be negative? Why does it have to be It's not that it can't, but it just makes factoring hard, completing the square hard, and then quadratic is the only one that it's not that bad. So it just makes the math harder to do. You could leave it like that if you're using the formula, but for factoring or completing, it makes it difficult. Yes, good question. OK, uh, I'm going to use factoring, the easiest one on this problem. OK, is there a GCF here on the left side? Is there a GCF? Yep, yeah, it's an x. What's left behind? x minus 7, and that's still equals 0. So does anyone know if two things, x and x minus 7, are being multiplied and they equal 0, what do I know about those two things? They equal 0. So either x equals 0 or x equals 0. Negative 7. Negative zero. Positive 7. Positive 7. Yeah, because um, if x is positive 7, what's 7 minus 7? 0, and that's what I wanted. Okay, so you got your two numbers. I'm going to circle these, but these are not my answers. Because what do I want for my answers? I don't want just x equals something. I want an ordered pair. So I want an x comma... 7. Oh, wait, sorry. Why? And sorry, Betsy, you said there are two X's? The X's. Those are the two X's. How do you do that? Good. We got, you see where we actually got the numbers? So you got X equals 0 and X equals 7. So that's where I get those. But aren't there two points you're trying to figure out? We want to do that. Michael? I understand all this. I'm just awesome. Confused. I understand what you're trying to do, but I'm just confused on where you got the X minus 7. Oh, when you, when you get the GCF, which is X, Right here, oh, okay. and then you're left with x minus seven. Oh, wait, sorry, I'm looking at the graph here, and are we allowed to do like the y-axis go up by like thirty? And the x go yeah, up you by can 20. do different denominations. It's easier when you have like a computer program, or they printed it out because for us, it's like you go by thirty, and if I tell you go to twenty-seven, you're like, where's that at? You know, it's hard. But for them, it's all digital, uh, digitized. Easy to do. I know. Pretty cool. Okay, anyway, I only have x values. I need to find ordered <laughs> pairs. So, Marissa, what did you say? How do I find out this ordered pair? It's kind of like what we did either beginning of this chapter or last chapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remember your graphing parabolas? Remember when you're trying to get ordered pairs? You got an x, but then plug it back into the original equation. But I have not one original equation, but... The same thing. Yeah. So do the easier one. Which yeah, one? do the easier one right here. I could plug it in here, but I'm going to use the easier one. So what's negative 2 times 0? Let's go with 0. 0 plus 18? 18. So what's the first ordered pair? Mm, 0, 18 is the first ordered pair. That's the first ordered pair. That's where the water and the slanted surface meet. And if you're thinking like... You can think of it almost like maybe inches or feet, you know, at 0, 18. I think it's going to be inches more. makes Are sense. Draw this? No, just this one. Just this one. 
How do I find what set what order pair seven goes with? What's negative two times seven? Negative fourteen, negative 14 plus eighteen. Four. So my other ordered pair is seven, four. That's where the those two are going to meet. Uh, the eight, this eighteen. I put in zero for x, so that I got my y equals 18. So that was my first ordered pair. And then to get my four, I put in seven for x, and I get y equals four. Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, let's just do one of them. And if you do the easier one, just that makes your life easy. But could you put it up here? I hope so. What's zero, negative zero squared? Zero, what's five times zero? What do you get when you put in zero? 18, so I got that first order pair. What if I put seven? What's seven squared? What's the opposite of 49? Negative 49. What's seven times, seven times five? What's negative 49 plus 35? 14. Negative 14, yeah. What's negative 14 plus eight? Four, we got our same answer. Do you see how they both come up with it? And that's because both of them are equal to. Why? Each they're both equal to each other. Yeah, they're the same thing. Uh, and I should clarify that. This is the line and this is the parabola, but they're both going to intersect right there. Because it's um, y equals a max plus b. Yep, slope intercept form. Yes. So you can just put the ordered pair back into the problem to mm -hmm. make sure it's correct. Yeah, you can check, and it has to check both. So like that ordered pair has to check both of these, and that ordered pair has to check both of those to make sure it's right. It's going to be kind of like the problems we did earlier, mm -hmm. where so you'll get two ordered pairs, but one of them won't work. It's possible, yes. Oh. Yep. OK. What was the uh, quadratic? Was it um, x squared minus 7x equals 0? OK. We solve by factoring. Now we're going to solve by the quadratic formula. So is this in standard form? Yes. Okay, so you're going to label your A, your B, and your C. Uh, so what's your A? One. One. B? Seven. C? Seven. Zero. It's zero because there's no, well, the constant is there, it's zero. So you're going to put in the quadratic formula. Negative B, plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So you're going to put the numbers where they belong. Um, B is negative 7. A is 1. And C is 0. First thing you want to do is get the discriminant. So who can tell me what the discriminant gets you? Um, so go ahead and work it out if you need to. Sorry? 49 minus 4. 49 minus 0. So it's 49. You get the square root of 49, which means how many answers are you going to get? Seven. Two rational. rational numbers because it's a perfect square. 49 is a perfect square. Okay, ready? So listen, we just did this, and you guys agree it's 49. It's positive 49. So what's the opposite of negative 7? Plus or minus the square root of 49 all over 2. So it's 7 plus 7. 14 divided by 2, I get 7. What's 7 minus 7? Zero. 0 over 2. So remember what we got for our x values before? We got them again. Now, to find the y values, I'd plug them back in, but we already did that. But do you see where we get that, those x values still? That's using the second method, using the quadratic formula. Yes, ma'am? Yes, yes, yes. So the, would that apply then? Yeah, the, I asked you guys a question. You know, they said 49. Did you get 49 here? So what kind of answer should I get? Two rational numbers. And like I'm checking them. Are these two rational numbers? Yes. If they weren't, I did something wrong. It's a check. It's a check in the middle of the process so you can, um, you can at least go through and say, all right, my answers make sense. Yes, me? Yeah, so you see where I got the 7? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then what is the discriminant? What did you get, 49? Mm -hmm. Okay, what is the square root of 49? 7. So that's where I got that 7 right there. So I did 7 
plus or minus 7 over 2. Okay, but is that the only way to figure these out? Yes. Nope. X squared minus, sorry? 7x, thank you, equals 0. There's a third way. It's called completing the square. Let's go ahead and do that. Now, if you struggled with it last week, here's your time to maybe get a little bit better at it. Okay, so I'm going to write in standard form and get the constant on one side. Blank equals 0. So completing the square, I've got to find out what's that number that makes it a perfect square trinomial. So you guys remember, what do I do? What do I use? Uh, negative P over 2. Okay, you're thinking axis of symmetry. But here, you're just taking negative B, which is, or sorry, just B, negative 7. And what do you do with that number? Oh, yeah. Divide it by 2. And leave it like that. Don't make it a decimal number. And then square it. Square it. So what's negative 7 half squared? Fourth. You're going to add 49 fourths to both sides. And listen, you're, if I ask you just to solve, you can use any method uh, unless I say use this method or that method. So in this case, we're just using them all to make sure we can get it. All right, what does this perfect square trinomial factor? X, X minus seven. seven halves. Where did I get that seven halves? It's right there. So I pulled that number. It was already there. Squared equals, oh man, what's 0 plus 49 fourths? 49 fourths. We're adding, so we get 49 fourths. What do you do to both sides? I want to get rid of this squared. So I square root. I get x minus 7 halves. And then please someone tell me how I say it correctly. Equals 7 halves. Plus or minus 7 halves. So you gave me one of the answers, it's also minus 7 halves. So what do we do to finish this problem out? Add 7 halves to both sides. And I am left with x equals 7 halves plus or minus 7 halves. What's 7 halves plus 7 halves? 14 halves, which gives you 7. And what's 7 halves minus 7 halves? 0 halves, which gives me so this is not the answer, but those are how I get my x values. So you see how any, any method works? Yeah, the first method is better. Yeah, first method in this problem was so easy. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you this. Yes, and as much as we've done factoring for two chapters now, two chapters, there are still some who don't know how to factor. Here's your chance to redeem that because you can just make it easier for yourself if you do it. Okay. Yes, I will give you a quiz back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sir? Um, how did you get the 49 fourths like this? I don't know where else it was. Uh, I was right here. Oh, okay. Um, how many of you, if, you, if you had a choice, you had to pick one of the three, you would always, if you could, just factor. You would just factor. That's what we did the first time. That's right here. You just factor as best you can. Okay, how many of you use quadratic formula. So that's what we did secondly. Let's so use a quadratic formula. You could just do it. How many of you would use completing this? How many would use complete? Not, not as popular. How many would use a fourth method? Anybody? All right, good. You guys already know what the fourth method is. Okay, here's what you need to do. If you prefer factoring, and I just say to solve, factor. But sometimes you don't know how to factor. So then you're like, what do I do? I'm stuck. I love factoring. I can't do it today. Then do complain the square or quadratic. Then you're in trouble, but you have till noon. Friday. This is right. If you try to factor and it doesn't work, then you write prime. You could write prime, and it's easy to grade. Minus however many points that was worth. Yep. Don't give me prime. That's good. And then I need to see Jensen after class. Um, so do you guys understand? You understand that there are three methods. You don't have to pick one or the other unless you're, you're really preferring one. That's fine. I'm totally okay with that. Okay, let's do another one here. Um, it's on page 267, and it's example number one. 
so they give us a system and they want us to give, a, give them the ordered pairs 2x plus y equals 2 and then y equals x squared minus 2x I'll make sure I say that right. x squared minus 2x Uh, minus 14. Okay. Davis, this equation would be graphed as a blank. As a linear blank. Well, Say it. As a linear it's a line. a line. This is a line. <laughs> Murphy, this is graphed as a Why is a parabola, Caroline? Why is that one a parabola? Because it has a quadratic form. It's a quadratic equation. It has oh, cool. to the second power. How do I know this was a line, Alyssa? Because it has one x. Uh, sorry, the exponent of x is highest one. Yes, power. highest power is one. So that's a line. That's a that's a parabola. You know it because of the way the power of x is really all you need to look at there and there. Okay, but I'm just going to give you help. On all these problems, if you want to just get y by itself on both equations, it makes it easier to just set up. So the bottom one is already y equals blah. So how do I get the top one to be y equals something? Subtract what? Or two. Or not. Close, you're getting there. Oh, 2x. Subtract 2x from both sides up here. Because that's going to get you y equals negative. I'm going to write negative 2x plus 2. That's the same thing as the top one, just rearrange, making it easier to work out. Okay, yes, sir? Don't you want it to be 2x minus 2 because you want the first one to be negative? That's if it was a quadratic. Like this one, yeah, this one. This is slope intercept form, so you can leave it like that. But if y equals all this and y equals all that, what do you know about all this and all that? They're equal to each other. So x squared minus 2x minus 14 equals negative 2x plus 2. And then get it into standard form. John? Um, so you have x squared, and then you add 2 add 2x on both sides. Good. Add 2x to both sides. What else would you do? Um, I would subtract 2 from both sides. Subtract 2 from both sides. And notice... I'm adding 2x minus 2 to both sides. That's really what I'm doing. I'm OK. Um, that's allowed. I'm going to put x squared. Uh-oh. Minus 16 equals 0. OK. Factor it. Let me begin. So x squared minus 16 equals 0. Factored. Mm -hmm. All right. Like the x values don't work, like when we were, like a couple chapters ago, when we were saying if it worked or not. So like, on these, why aren't we saying that too? Well, d do they work? Yes, they do. So here's the thing. If you just were given this problem, you're working out, you get to this step, and you're like, that doesn't factor. That's fine if you said it didn't factor. You don't put prime, because that's not the right answer. So what do you do? It doesn't, it's prime. In your mind, what do you do? You put that. Try and do perfect. You could do complete the square. You could add zero x. You can add zero x and do quadratic equation. You could do any one of those. In fact, you know which method always works no matter what? Quadratic, quadratic formula always works no matter what. Even completing the square, but that this one completing the square is really tough. Quadratic is super quick, and then here you can also factor if you knew it was a. Someone said it, but difference of two squares. So what's the factoring of this? X plus 4, X minus 4. It doesn't matter which one's first. Equals 0. So what's your X going to be? Either 4 or negative 4. So that, those are your X values. I'm going to circle them just so I know where they're at. They're not, that's not my answer. Sorry? In future lessons, could we like... 
would we only circle one because maybe the other one would have worked? Well, I, for me, I'm circling it because I'm not sure what works. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, those are my X's now. How do I find my Y's? Plug it in. Plug it in. I want you guys to do this and I'll get your question. I want you to plug in four into this equation right here, find y. I want you to substitute negative four into this equation right here and solve for y. Use both of them. At the end of this, can you write down like all the different methods? Because sometimes I forget the different methods and I like not sure which one to do. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we have another period and we'll go through a summary again. Okay. Um, all right, what's negative two times four? Negative eight plus two. Negative six. All right, so you get your first order pair for negative six. That would be your first order pair for the x equals four. I wanted you to use this equation. Now, to get the second one, you got to be a little more careful because you have the squaring. Okay, what's negative four squared? 16. Uh, what's negative two times negative four? Positive eight. All right, what's 16 plus eight? 24 minus 14? 10. So what's the order pair for the negative 4? Negative 4. I accidentally use the same one. That's I okay. Used, I used y equals negative 2x plus 2, and I used 2x plus y equals. Yeah, and really you can, use, you can use both of them on this one, both of them on that one, both of them on that one, or a mix. But I just wanted you to get practice with that one. Because when do you use this one? It's when you're graphing. Uh, Parabolas. Yeah, you have to use that middle one, so might as well get more practice. Ma'am? Um, I did that, but also trying awesome. to use the quadratic formula too. Okay, what were your, what was your, um, so this one right here, right? Mm -hmm. What was your A value? One. What was your B? Zero. Yeah. And what was your C? Yeah. Great. No, you're not, you're not required to check anything. That's up to you. I would do it. And you can do it mentally or you can work it out. Uh, sorry, we're going to do qua uh, quadratic formula. Is that what you said? Okay, A is 1, B is 0, C is negative 16. Is that, we're good with that? Okay, so negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. So we're just putting in numbers where they belong. So B is 0, so 0, 0. A is 1, 1, 1, and then negative 16. So you just put the numbers where they belong. OK, looking at the discriminant, the discriminant, what do you get? What's 0 squared? And then what's negative 4 times 1 times negative 16? Positive 64. So I get the opposite of 0. Plus or minus, what's the square root of 64? Okay, what kind of answers are you going to get? Rational. Two yeah. rational numbers. Good, two rational numbers over. Is that what you got, Caroline, or did something? No, I, I, I saw it. <laughs> you see? Okay, that's right. What's 0 plus 8? Four. 4 divided by 2? I get my first answer, 2. What's 0 minus 8? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It's 8. 4. Yeah, so I don't know. I went too quick. Okay, what's 0 minus 8? Negative 8 divided by 2? Okay, what did we get? I'm going to circle these. What did we get in the last method? We get the same thing after I checked my mistake. So we got 4 and negative 4. Okay, so can you use quadratic formula? Okay. Mm -hmm. What I want you to do, I left it with the last class. I want to see what you guys get. Complete the square. That's okay. Try it. I mean. Oh, nice. Okay, it's x squared, and then you're like, wait, I don't even have an x term. So that's really easy. Uh, it's going to be pretty easy. Yep. Um, because I remember I want to get standard form, but then get that constant to the others. I'm completing the square right now. So I'm going to move this over there. 
And then you're like, where'd this guy come from? Well, he was there, he just wasn't written. So now I gotta find this blank. What's zero divided by two? Zero. Squared? Let's add zero to both sides. You're like, wait, what do you do? Okay. I think this is gonna still work. X. Zero over two. X squared plus zero. Plus zero squared equals 16? Yes. And what do you do? Square root both sides, you get x plus 0 equals plus or minus 4. You add 0 to both sides, you get x equals, this is awesome, plus or, plus or minus 4, right? Is that what we got last time? There's no way to find that out. What? Well, you, listen. Yes. And so you just yeah. square root of 16 to put negative positive? Yep. Yep. Okay, here's, actually, here's another cool way. This is actually the fourth way you guys wanted. Okay, you see that problem? Yes. Okay, so all I did was add 16 to both sides. How do I get x by itself? Oh, nice. I'm left with x equals plus or minus 4. And that's what I got. The fourth way. So when can we use that? Um, don't use it yet too much. That's actually chapter 9. We did. We're going to come back to it. We will. That is the fourth option. On some of them. Not all of them. Yes. It doesn't work on all of them. This one right here? Is that one value? Oh, so you're saying negative and then positive? Mm-hmm. Yeah, instead of writing this, which you could, you're saying it both at the same so time. So both of you write on the test. You write it both. Ways. Yes. Uh, yeah, but what am I trying to figure out in this problem? Remember, these aren't my answers. They just get me what x equals. So I got to plug it back in to get y. So I'll get ordered pairs. And the ordered pairs were four, six, and four, negative ten. I think those are the answers. Okay. So what do you ask? So if you give us this kind of problem, you say solve. What is the answer that you want? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know what I was just making them up. Negative four, positive ten? Yeah. And is it four, six? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, those are. Four, negative six. Oh, miss those signs. Okay, so that's, that's how the answer should look. Sorry, I wasn't looking at them. All right, I want you guys to try on page two, 269 to try these number one. Page 269 on the try these, do number one. No, you do not have to graph them. Not yet. I just want you to get the method down. One of them's gonna be a parabola, right? The bottom one, gotta be a parabola. The top one's gotta be a line. It's a line. What kind of line? It's special. Oh yeah, it's a horizontal line. Horizontal line. But how do we solve the top one then? We already know what the y value is. Yeah. Okay, they gave you the y. So can we just plug it in or what? Mm -hmm. If y equals all this and y equals all that. Would that be the easiest? Yeah, yeah, you already have y. Then you just add 2 to the other side? Yeah, add 2 to both sides. You're left with 0 equals 6x squared plus 17x plus 14. You want to factor that one? Be my guest. No. Yes, please. Okay. Do we have to? No, you can do whatever you want. So we could learn You could, you're just not going to get it right. So any one of the three methods. I would use quadratic formula because the numbers are kind of big, but that's just me. Whoa, that's, wouldn't that make it Is it negative? Mm. Plus or minus? Say that again, sorry? Is it negative b? Or plus oh, yeah, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared 
minus 4ac all over 2a. Wait, so we do bridge, right? Like you could do bridge, bridge, yes. You could do bridge on that. Possibly. I mean, you could try it. Oh, um, factory, you do the bridge. You'd have to do that. Yes, let me give you your quizzes. Bye bye, school.